here to talk about our art word for the day. So our art word is texture today. And texture is the feel or how something looks um, of an item. So here I have several things with different texture. So this one over here is kind of soft. It's got, um, it's kind of raised. It's a cloth, an art cloth. It's got little loops. It's a little bit uh, bumpy and it's not flat, it's kind of raised. That's how that one feels. This one is definitely bumpy and raised and it's harder. It's got all this dried plaster on it. It's very rough. This piece of foil is very smooth, you can feel that. And it's kind of crinkly and shiny. When this tissue, it's very soft and thin. Look how thin it is. It's not very thick at all. Our plaster over here is much thicker. It's wider. And then I've got this little paper towel piece that we had watercolors on it. And it's not the same as the tissue. Um, they're both pretty thin. But this one, this paper towel has some little bumps on it. It's a little more uh, rough. So I want you to look around and see what you feel. And what's the texture of it? Hey kiddos, Miss Christian here. Today I'm in my home studio. This is my living room and this is our art table. We keep it right in the front room uh, because we do art a lot. So I have some supplies ready. I've got a little journal. Um, if you've got a kit from the studio, you'll have a little white book with a rubber band. This is your little art journal. It's got some watercolor papers put together for you. And if you didn't, no big deal. I just want you to go grab some printer paper, or any extra paper. Maybe you have some coloring pages that you just the front of them and you can use the back of them now. Um, this is a great way to use up your extra pages because um, we want to use everything. We don't want to keep getting new papers, new papers, new papers, right? You want to use every bit of space. Um, <laughs> that's my dog Max. He's going to help us paint um, or probably just look at the birds. Right, Max? So, our art prompt for our journal is find in your yard what you can see either out your window or if you're able to go into your yard or if you're able to take a walk. I want you to look and see what is growing. It's been raining here and it's spring and it's beautiful. And in my yard, I have a lot of wildflowers. I also have a lot of little green shoots popping up and I'm seeing a lot of butterflies, and I'm seeing a lot of bees, <laughs> and wasps, and grasshoppers, and I also have a pond in my front yard, so I'm hearing a lot of frogs, actually. Super cool. So I want you to look at your world and see what you see, and I can't wait to hear about it. And I want you to take your art journal. And I want you to um, either sketch it out or paint it, whatever you see, okay? Front page you can decorate if you haven't already with maybe your name, say Miss Christians or whoever, what your name is. Um, magic journal, special journal, art journal, whatever you want it to say, okay? And then just open it up. And if you can, um, it's always good to put a little note at the bottom of kind of what you were thinking, what your art prompt was. Um, it could be one little word if you want to try that, if you're working on your letters. Maybe mom or dad can, our sister or brother can help you write. Um, so our book for today is about flowers. It's called Planting a Rainbow. And so our art prompt is, let's, we'll call it maybe um, uh, spring, okay? You can just write spring or um, nature walk or whatever you want to title it, okay? Whatever you want to label it so that you remember what all these drawings are about. So when I went in my yard, I saw some daisies popping up. 
and I went and I looked at the daisies and I really looked at them. I got up close and I examined them and I put my book next to me. Um, or you could just look and then bring your book back, um, come back inside and do it in your book. But I did bring my book with me. I like to keep my art book with me all the time. Um, so when I'm inspired, when I see something that sparks an idea, I can just jot it down. So I saw daisies and I noticed that they have very long leggy stems. And they don't just have one little set of leaves. They have a lot of set of leaves and they're kind of jagged. They're not like the big straight leaf we always see in drawing. So I wanted to, and they're white, I noticed that too. So in my journal, I kind of sketched out some stuff and, you know, really draw or drew what I see. That's the key to art, right? Really, really, really looking and you draw what you see. So I'm also going to take my watercolors and you could use markers or crayons or Sharpie. I love Sharpies. We know I love Sharpies. Um, remember, a Sharpie does bleed to the other side of the page. You will see it on the back, okay? So if there's something special on the back, don't use a Sharpie. Um, remember why we use Sharpies. We use Sharpies because they are waterproof. They have an oil base in them. And we know that oil and water do not mix. They do not like each other. So when I use the oil-based Sharpie, it won't bleed, it won't blur the lines when I do watercolor, right? So I'm loading my brush. I get it a little wet. I'm not digging in the watercolors. I'm just swirling and I'm loading up that brush and he's nice and green now. And I'm gonna just go and paint my going to paint my little daisy here. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go outside, see what you see. And I want you to just hit the little pause button on your video. And I'm going to be right back here <laughs> when you get back. Okay, and then we'll move on to the next part of our art class. Okay, good luck. Bye. Hey kiddos, I'm out here in my yard, it's actually raining, and I wanted to show you the daisies that I found. You can see, Jackson is going to show us my son, he's videoing. Come up close, Jackson, and show the flowers, would you please? I already did. I assumed it. Oh, okay. So, you can see that they're white, and you can see um, that the leaves are all jagged. Can you see that, Jackson? Yeah, uh, no. Hey friends, I just wanted to go over what I have over here. So I've got my paper, I've got my big paper right here that's ready to go. I've got my paints. I already have them out on a plate. I've got red, yellow, blue, and white. And we're going to make the other colors that are missing. These are our primaries. And then we're going to make what's called our secondaries. It's when you take the two primaries and you put them together to make the next color. Then I also have a couple things that can make stamps. The bottom of this little cup can be put in paint and then stamped. I have also the rim could be stamped. I also grabbed a little lid. That's a nice little size stamp. A water bottle lid works great. Um, I have, oh, I have this instead of construction paper because I'm just using what I have, right? It's better to use what we have than try to go find extra stuff and buy it that we don't need. So instead of, this is brown and it looks like construction paper, so I'm going to use this to tear up and use for my project. It's just an old paper bag. I also have some glue. Again, I'm using what I have. I didn't have any white glue today, but I did have this, and it'll be fine. I'll use this. I also have some rainbow popsicle sticks, and if I don't have those at home, I could just cut these out of paper, and I could just make what looks like little sticks. Or if I have regular popsicle sticks, I could just paint these the colors I want them. I'm also going to use just this one plate, but if you want to separate all your colors on little plates, that's fine. Then you could have them separate and not mix, but I don't mind, so I keep them on one paper. I also have a little paper towel. 
Um, that is to wipe my brush. When I mix my colors and I want to wash off my paintbrush, I'm going to use my water, but then it's really wet and drippy. So I take my brush and I always wipe it off on my towel, or you could use an extra sponge. A sponge is great. And that keeps our paper from getting super wet. Um, and then I have several different kinds of paint brushes. If you only have one, that's okay. But if you have a nice big thick one or several thick ones, let's use those because those hold a lot of nice paint and they give you a nice smooth paint line. Okay? All right. Oh, and also this is a little extra. This isn't on your list, but I couldn't help myself when I was looking for things to paint with or stamp with. The bottom of this is a little one inch stamp, but it's just a K cup, but it also has coffee in it. And do you know what you can do with coffee? You can make a really nice paint, especially a muddy soil color. Just add a little bit of coffee, a little bit of paint or water, and you mix it up and it has this nice soil color and it's gritty, it's awesome. Look at that. Woo! Very, very dirt like. All right, kiddos, we will get started. Okay, friends, you ready? Okay, here I have my paper. I've laid it out and it is called horizontal when it's long ways like this. Long like a hot dog, okay? If we do it vertical, we, that's called that's up and down and it's called vertical. Today we're going to do horizontal because we are going to make a row of flowers just like our book and we need it nice and long so we can put lots of beautiful flowers on there. So the first thing we're going to do, you can see I already kind of showed you with my coffee paint. Um, we're going to find kind of either halfway or a little bit down below halfway. We're going to make like a nice little soil mark, okay? It does not need to be perfect. You just kind of put it where you want your soil to be. Okay, and that is going to be the line that shows us where the top and the bottom are. This is where all of our dirt and our bulbs and our roots are going to go for our plants. And then up here is where all of our beautiful flowers, maybe grass and stems and leaves. And if you even want to put sun and sky, you can do that. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take that paper. You might have, if you've got an art kit, you probably have some little squares of brown construction paper. Um, you can use that. You can also use, like I talked about, I have this old paper bag, right? This brown, that works. And also your art supplies came in a brown paper bag, didn't they? So you can take that and tear it all up because it will work great for making the bottom of your picture. So I'm going to take my hands, you can use scissors, but your hands are the best tools, aren't they? So you can just tear these up in little shreds or bigger pieces, just big enough that it's going to look like a nice dirt under yours, okay? So you work on making a little pile of lots of little torn pieces, and we're just going to make a pile because what we're going to do is put some glue on our paper for that pile. So I want you to get your glue out, okay? after you made your pile, of course. And if you need to take a minute to make that little pile of torn up papers, just press the little pause button, okay? And then you can push play again when you're ready. And I'll be right here for you. Okay, I am ready with my pile. So I think also what I'm gonna do is my coffee paint over here. You could use brown paint, you could use nothing if you don't wanna do this, but I really like this coffee paint, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom too. Just in case I don't have any spots that are covered on the bottom of my picture, when I glue down my pieces, this will show through. And it kind of smells good. Or maybe you think it smells awful if you don't like coffee, but this cushion loves coffee, so it smells awesome to me. I'm gonna take my glue. Today I have some pink glitter glue, but don't worry, it, it really won't look pink. This stuff doesn't show up very well. So, I want you to take a little note here. You see this little white? When our glue is closed, he's going to have a little white dot like that. And if you want him to open, we're going to turn it, and look, he disappears. And now he's open, and he's ready to pour out. Now you might have a white glue and you can't see all of it. I want you to give it a minute. It's gonna take a minute to come out. So be patient, friends, okay? And you can just put some glue all over. You can do dots if you wanna do one piece at a time. Or you 
you can do like Miss Christian, who does nothing one at a time, and just do some nice swirls. Because, friends, I have plans of making this whole thing full of papers. Now, notice I am not holding my bottle and just going huge puddle watching it pour. Because you know what? That is not going to get all the other papers. That's just going to do one paper, and then it's going to squish out all of that paper and make another hole in the back of my paper. And I don't want that. So if I do that, no worries. I'm just going to spread it out or get my trusty paintbrush over here. And I'll just spread it out. Okay? You can do it however you like. All you need to do is just get the glue covered all over this soil, however you like to do it, okay? There we go. I'm ready, and I can even put that in my water cup. Okay, now I'm going to take my little papers, and I'm just going to put them anywhere I want. All over the place. And you may have your paper bag. And you may also have some dark brown paper. Use both. It will look great. All the different colors together will look awesome. It will give it more texture. Texture is when it looks like it's raised. See this? See it has, it's not flat. It's got like a nice feeling to it. It's raised, it's not smooth. Okay, I'm just working on that and I want to get all the way up to here. You know what? Maybe I need a little extra glue right here. No problem. There we go. And I need some more papers, so I'm just going to tear them up, right? No big deal. And you know what else? I kind of like my coffee, so I'm going to put that right on top too because I want it to be darker like the dark paper you might have. And I really like the coffee grounds in there for some added. Some extra glue. Okay. I think it's getting to where I want it. Is yours getting where you want it? You think it's looking good? Awesome. I can't wait to see what you've done. Okay, I want just a little bit more. Okay, cool. I've got that all done. I've got all my soil. This is our soil line right here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make, just like our book, I'm going to make those bulbs. Remember we saw the bottom, the bulb is how the flower was started. It's like it's seed. So I'm gonna make, just like with my stamp, I'm gonna stick this in my white paint right here. Just gonna squish it in there. Now, our book was called Painting a Rainbow. So it had six colors. It had red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white, right? I am going to do my bulbs first. So we have six colors for the rainbow. Um, you may only like um, red flowers or you may like purple flowers, but I think I'm going to do the rainbow. So I'm going to do one of each color. So I need six of them and I want to make sure they all fit on my paper. Um, sometimes I go too fast and I get started, and then I realize I didn't space them well enough, and maybe I only got four on there. So, I'm going to maybe, this is me, you can do it how you like, but I'm going to just start over on this side so I can kind of think about where I want them. Let's see, one, whoop, a little white, two, oh, and my papers are coming up, don't worry, just stick them back down. One, two, three four and you know I'm not putting them all in a row because I don't think they all grow like that one two three four how many more do we need that's right two more five and one more six cool okay I've got six bulbs down there now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to paint a line going up from my bulb. And it's going to be a green one, like they're growing up out of the bulb. Problem though, do I have green paint? No, I don't. I don't have green paint. But I need green paint, don't I? So I'm going to take my paints and I'm going to mix them. And if you come to the studio very often, you know we love to mix paints. It's like one of our favorite things to do. So I'm going to take my nice paintbrush, which still has coffee in it, but that's okay. I'm going to blot it down. And I'm going to make some green. Uh, oh, I should ask you, shouldn't I? What colors do I need to make green? I need a blue, that's right, so I'll get some blue. I'm gonna do what's called loading my brush, right friends? Load our brush. And I'm just gonna put it right here, right? And then, I have another brush, but if you don't have another brush, you just go ahead and clean that brush, okay? Clean it well. Wipe him off, his little hair. Dab him dry. And then I'm gonna get yellow, that's right because blue and yellow make green. Look at that, and let's see if we're right. Can you see? Yeah, we got a nice dark green. Hmm, it's a little darker than I want. What can I do to make it lighter? We have a little saying at the studio, add some what to make it light. That's right, white, add some white to make it light. I have another paintbrush that I'm just gonna dip a little white from my other jar. So I'm going to add a little white and that's going to lighten it up a little bit. I could also, friends, add some yellow to this, couldn't I? Because the yellow is a nice bright color and that will lighten it. It's lighter than the blue so it will make it a lighter green. Okay, so now I've got some green. I've got it loaded up on my brush. Remember we said that means we get our paintbrush all lots of paint on it. Okay, I want to pretend like I'm growing these beautiful bulbs. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go, whoop, whoop. You do have to do the whoop or they won't grow, okay? Whoop, no, seriously, you do. I wanna hear it, whoop. I know you're laughing at me, but I wanna hear you whooping. Whoop, and uno mas, whoop. Perfect, they've all grown, they're beautiful. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Now you might wanna do some leaves. I'm gonna do my leaves in a minute. I think I'm gonna wait and see how I wanna do my flowers first. Okay, flowers, we need some flowers now. Okay, I'm also gonna take maybe a different kind of stamp this time. And I wanna do the inside of my flowers. Um, they're all going to be kind of different, but I'm going to do maybe some yellow. I already have yellow, so I'll do right here. Now, this is my stem. I am going to give it a little space so I can do my leaf, my petals, excuse me, but you don't have to. Maybe you don't care about that. You just want to plop it right down. You can watch mine and maybe think how you want to do it. In fact, I'll show you one down in there and see what we think about it. It's always good to experiment, right? We all have to do it our own way. Okay, I've got some middle of my flower ready. Okay, but I also wanna make sure I have all the colors because remember I said I wanna do a rainbow flower. So I wanna do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Now in our book, if you have time, I don't have time in this video because you'd be watching me for so long. Um, you could look at some of the pictures in our book and maybe practice making those shapes. There were lots of great shapes in there to make different kinds of beautiful flowers, daffodils and other things. For time, I'm going to do an easy flower on each one. I'm just going to change the color, okay? So we've got green and we decided that we need orange. Our next two primaries we need to mix are red and yellow and that will give us a beautiful orange color. I'm gonna do a lot of yellow, just scoot it over. And I'm just gonna do a dot of red because red is really bright and it will take over our paint. So I just need a little bit. Look at that. 
and I'm just kind of dabbing to stay in my space. And I've chosen a very small plate, but maybe you want a bigger plate so you have lots of room to work, or maybe you want several plates. I like to just wash them, but you can use a disposable one too. Okay, so I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and I need one more. While I have my paintbrush loaded, I'm just going to do my orange flower anyway because I've already got all this paint ready and I don't want to waste it. So red, orange would be this one. I'm just going to make some nice little petals. And I can see how it's already going to run into my other one. So maybe I'll make sure it's a little bit small. Okay. I like the way that one looks. Okay, I'm gonna rinse off my brush and then I'm gonna do the red one. And now it looks like my orange one has taken up a lot of space, but I kind of think that's cool because it's gonna give it depth, which means it's gonna make it look like some of the flowers are a little more forward and some are a little more back. And I'm okay with that, I like it. But maybe you wanna make yours smaller so they don't touch. You just have to think about that. Okay, I'm gonna do red. And this flower, I'll do a little different. Maybe we'll just do a little bit of this. A little bit of this. There we go. I like that. There, there's my red one. Okay, rinse in my brush. I'll put that over here so you can see. Rinse a rinse a rinse a rinse. And remember, just dip his little hair, brush it on the side, and then we're gonna always dab our brush because we don't want all that water. It's too watery. Red, orange, yellow. Okay, I've got my yellow. I'm gonna load it up. This one, you know, I knew I did a circle, but I think maybe I'm gonna make this one look a little different. I think it's okay to change my mind, and I'm going to. And do them a little bigger. I like them to look like that. And I'm good with that. Red, orange, yellow. What's next? Green. And you know what? I have some yellow on my brush. I'm okay with that, with touching the green, because blue and yellow make green. So what's a little more yellow? No big deal. Let's see. Looking like that one's behind it. Green. This is a little harder to do one-handed, <laughs> but that's okay. Red, orange, yellow, green. What's up next? What's up next? That's right, blue. All right, my water's getting kind of muddy, but it's still working. Got our blue right here. And I'm gonna do maybe another one of these big, big, Ooh, you see the green and the blue mixing? They're making like a blue-green. I like it. I'm okay when things don't go just the way I planned because sometimes they turn out better. I like that. Look, it looks like nice little details to the flower. Okay, what's the last one? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. You got it. Cleaning that brush each time. Oh, but you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have because I... Need to do what color? Blue. And what else? Red, you're right. Now, we want purple, so let's see. Which one's darker? The blue is, that's right. So we're gonna need less of the blue. We're gonna do a big bunch of red right there. And then I'm gonna do a little dot of blue, right? Cause he's so dark, I don't need a lot of them. And you know what, I wanna lighten it up. I want a lighter purple, so I'm gonna use my white right there. Add white to make it light, right? Our palette's looking very pretty. A palette is where all the colors are. Okay, last one. And you know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to do like a daffodil one. Or a tulip, excuse me. This would be like a tulip. There we go. There. And I just kind of scooped that right over. Perfect. Now I have all my flowers painted. I've got my bulbs in there. I've got my nice coffee dirt going on with my papers. Let's see, what do we need now? What do we need now? Ooh, I know what I'm going to do. I think that my little bulbs, I think they need roots. How would they get all the water? How would they get it? 
I'm going to use white. I'm going to use some more white. Maybe yellow would be good too. You know what? I think yellow would look nice. So I'll get my palette, get a little yellow. Just going to make some squiggly squids. There we are. Look at that. These are like all the little roots in the dirt getting water. Here we go. Take your time. You don't have to go as fast as me. I just don't want you to have to watch a very long video. So I'm trying to go fast for you. Fast enough, right? Because an artist takes their time. Okay. Got our roots going. Hmm. How about, how about, what do we need? Maybe some leaves, like y'all said earlier. Right? I'm going to do like this. And I've changed to a nice thin brush. You can use lots of different brushes. They all serve a different purpose, right? Our big, thick brush gave us a nice, in one big stroke, a nice, big, thick line. And our little brush is giving us nice little details, right? And I want you to take your time to really go in here later. And you can add great details, okay? Maybe you like lots of little tiny leaves on there. Maybe you want just a couple leaves. Maybe you want a leaf line. I don't know. You have to figure it out. See what you like. Ooh, and I think I want to connect these. And I can do that, right? Okay, I got all that going. Now we'll do our last little part. Oh, second last little part. I forgot. If you have some extra papers and you want to add them, this was a paper towel and we just used marker on it. It was left over, I found it in my pile. You can just take these in little tiny bits and if you wanna stick them right in the paint, this will again give us texture. We love texture. Those look really nice in that flower. So look around and see if you can see some extra things that you could add to your paper for texture. You can use the paint to glue it down, you can use the uh, glue to glue it down, it doesn't matter. They're so thin. Okay, the last little thing we need, in our book she had these great sticks, right? So you can write on your stick what kind of flower you've made, or you've grown, excuse me. Either you've made one up, maybe you invented a flower, or maybe you made one that she made, our, our author. I'm gonna stick this right like that, like it's stuck in the dirt, like she stuck it down. Now you may have different pop color, pop color, pop sickle sticks because you decided that you wanted to make different types of flowers than I did. I went with the rainbow, so I'm using the same colors for each one. When we garden and we plant our garden, we put these little sticks in to show what we planted because when they're little tiny plant babies, you cannot tell what is what. So we put these little sticks and we write the name. Maybe we'll write tulip on this yellow one. Tulip. And this is a good time to practice your letters too. You can ask mom, dad, sister, brother, someone to help you spell. Or just take a go at it and try, right? Sound it out. All right, I think mine's done and I cannot wait to see how you all have made yours different than mine. All right, I love and miss y'all, and I'll see you soon. Hey friends, thanks so much for joining me in this great art lesson. Uh, I had a lot of fun. We learned a great word, or actually two words today. Our first word was texture. Remember, we're going to look at our art and see if we can find any um, texture in there. And there always is texture. It's flat, it's smooth, it's rough, it's gritty, just like our coffee was gritty. Um, and our paper was raised and crumply when we put it on our, um, our soil, right? And then we also learned horizontal. When we put our paper horizontal, this is my daughter. She started this picture when we were doing extra paintings. This is horizontal, right? Long ways. And if we flip it this way, it's called vertical, right? So today we learned horizontal. So I take that back. We learned three words, horizontal, vertical, 
and texture. We got a bonus word in there. Um, our art prompt, we learned to go look outside and really closely like an artist does, examine things. Um, artists really take their time to look very close and see what is really there. Not what we think is there, but when we take our eyes and really look, what is really, really there? Are there little tiny lines we never saw before? Are there little hairs on the flowers we didn't know that were on the stem? What did you see today? Let me know, okay? And then we also read a great book by Lois Ehlert, right? We read our Planting a Rainbow book. And I just loved how Lois, um, in her pictures, they did collage like we did today. We had um, lots of different pieces of um, material and then we put them all together to make one big painting, right? We tore up our papers, we used coffee grounds to paint, we added popsicle sticks, um, and we, all of it together, we collaged it into a beautiful photo. And if you really look at Lois's pictures, all of her art looks like that, and it's so pretty, I love it. Um, and it's an easy style. That's a style is how someone chooses to do their art in different ways. Art looks so different um, depending on who did it, right? Um, and that's because every artist has a style, and you have a style too. Um, you just have to find out what it is, and the more you art, the more you'll figure that out. So thank you for joining us for that, our story. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is a messy art um, extension, so something you can continue your art day with. Um, we talked about planting, and what you can do now um, of course, you do need to ask, right? Because if we were in class, we would now do our messy art project, but we're not in class, are we? We're all at home. So I need you to ask mom and dad where you could do this idea um, and when you could do it, right? Um, we can't always do it right when we want to do it. We need to ask and make sure it's a good time. Um, and then if you do that, mom and dad will be more happy and likely to let you play longer, right? So what we could do is we could get outside and we could play in the mud and pretend to plant things, um, maybe make an insect home. We could collect all the flowers we see, just the little ones. We're gonna leave most of them to grow, right? But maybe just a little bit. Um, we can make flower soup. We could make a design with rocks that we collect, maybe a pattern, right? We could um, look at the flowers and see what dyes, what color we could get out of them. Um, you know when you roll around the grass and you hit your knee real hard in the grass and you get that nice green stain? That's because grass has a nice rich green dye in it and it stained your pants because um, the color. And so a lot of flowers do that. And you can kind of go outside and see what you can find. Squish them in your fingers and see if they stain your fingers. Squish them on the ground and see if they stain the ground. Squish them on paper and then record, which means write down what that flower was. And then you can see what color. And you can also smell it. Maybe you don't like the smell. Maybe you didn't know the flower really smells like that. Um, <laughs> try it out and see what you find. And I can't wait to see what you find. Now remember, we're gonna ask mom and dad, where is a good spot to do this? Um, if we're inside, maybe, like we painted with coffee today, maybe we could take um, a bowl, we're gonna cover our table, or maybe do it on the kitchen floor with a um, something on the floor, maybe like an old tablecloth, and then put down a little bowl, and we could actually play in old coffee grounds. Um, they won't hurt you. Actually, do you know that some people put them on their face for a face mask? Some ladies do that. Isn't that silly? They say it makes it nice and bright. Maybe you'll see if your mom does that. See if she does that little coffee, little coffee filter on there. So you can put uh, in a bowl some coffee grounds, maybe some scoops, and maybe you could do some popsicle sticks and pretend there's little worms in there. Maybe you could plant in there. Um, I don't know. You can you could do whatever you want at home, but you have to ask mom and dad, okay? So I'm gonna talk to you soon in our video meeting, and I can't wait to see all your pictures and make sure if you have any questions about our art project today or our art prompt, right? That's um, the idea to start us on our picture um, in our journal. 
or if you have a, a question on our art words, um, let me know because that's what we're going to talk about in our video meeting, okay? So I can't wait to see your pictures, hear your questions, and tell me all about what you did for messy art or if you didn't do it because you weren't interested. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.